Just for sitting down, he gets woos. Wow, that's, that's impressive. JJ, let me see if I've got this right. All right. You're from Iceland. Yeah. The name of the band is a Hawaiian word. It is. You moved to Austin, Texas, and you recorded the album in Nashville, Tennessee. That's a lot of ground. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a lot of traveling. <laughs> um, let, let's start with Iceland. Uh, you grew up in a, a small city outside of Reykjavik. Yeah. Um, what, what was that like? What's, what's, what's growing up in Iceland like? It was great in so many ways. You know, you just, it's a small community. You, I pretty much know everyone there. It's about a town of about 9,000? Yeah, it's about 9,000. And, um, yeah, like I said, you know, I have a lot of great friends. You know, uh, I met some of the guys from the band in school, you know, uh, grade school. And, uh, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was great for me growing up there. You know, you know uh, we, we were talking backstage, I've been to Iceland once, some of the, the landscape is really striking and different, um, but uh, it, it's also in some ways a little removed and, and, and remote. Did it feel, did, is, is it a different experience growing? Well, I mean, you wouldn't know because you didn't grow up anywhere else, but you know, you're in a town of 9,000 people, you're outside of Reykjavik, is it a, a, a country life, a, a regular city life? What's I guess we're that close to the, you know, the capital that, that uh, it doesn't really feel like uh, you're in the countryside that much, but, but you know, I guess you kind of get both a little bit. Right. But it's, it's kind of like um, being away for, for about two years now. You kind of, you know, uh, you realize how much you take it for granted, the, the whole nature scene and everything back home. So it's, uh, I'm grateful now for, for what you have back home, yeah. Uh, you said you, you met some of the guys in the band in, in high school, uh, and you sometimes say you started in a garage. What were the early days of the band like? It was, it was a garage, yeah. It was, it was a... Were you, were you still learning how to play? How old were you when you, when you started? Um, I kind of write it, started, uh, started out on piano and, and writing songs when I was quite young, um, and then, you know, kind of teamed up with with Danny from the band was was in we were in class together so you know he uh, started playing bass and it was kind of just a hobby at first and, and David came along and uh, yeah it was a hobby for a long time I don't think we we kind of you know we were serious about it but but as a career choice it didn't really seem like that at at the time to be honest yeah uh, and you said you started on piano and writing songs quite young what what was inspiring you, and what kind of songs were those when you were starting out? Um, I listened to a lot of old recordings growing up, you know, probably thanks to my, my father. Um, so, you know, I kind of just listened to everything, like 50s, 60s, 70s music. I'm very inspired by that, and then kind of kept digging deeper for, uh, deeper for the blues and, and getting into the Delta blues scene and everything, trying to... You know, it's easy to find everything today. You have Spotify and, and, and everything. You don't really have to go to the record store like in, back in the day. Sure, right. Uh, digging out the Delta Blues is no longer a, a treasure hunt. It, right. It's all there yeah. uh, electronically. So the, the sound, of the sound of the band, the sound of the record, draws heavily on American music, gospel, uh, old school rock, mm -hmm. uh, some blues. And, and that's the kind of music you gravitated to when you were still young, still in high school. So. Yeah, I would say so, for sure. Uh, was there um, was there any sense of uh, uh, distance that like that music starts in America? Did you always want to get here and, and find out about the source of it? Or yeah, I think it was always like a, a dream to to perform and, and record in the U.S. Um, it was I didn't think that would happen this fast. You know, I thought maybe we'd have to play a few toilet tours in Europe, or so to speak, you know, small tours, but yeah, it was, everything's been happening quite, quite fast. It's been an adventure, really, the last three years for us. So l let's talk a little bit about how that happened and how fast it happened. Although the, the sound that we're talking about is rooted in American music, uh, one of the breakthrough moments for you was doing a, an Icelandic song. Right. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how everything started back home for us, you know. Um, uh, overnight, it just kind of uh, became really popular. We were number one in the radio in the country, and uh, and I think that kind of led to to people 
listening to other uh, other stuff, you know, and uh, so that song. Uh, can you tell us a little about it? Is it is it actually an old Icelandic ballad? Or? Yeah, it is. It's uh, originally like a love poem from uh, back in the day, and then I think it was uh, in the mid '60s. Uh, this very like upbeat, a little different kind of song. So I, I kind of made it my own and 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 did this version that that uh, thankfully you know became very popular back home and. And like I said, I think that kind of led to, to everyone uh, checking out the other stuff that we had. And, uh, and we were, yeah, been very fortunate, you know, back home with all our success. Right, so that, that song, you had performed it live, it was on YouTube, it became a bit of a sensation. Right. Led people to your other material. And um, how quickly did you move from there, to literally, to the U.S.? You, you moved to, to Austin... Uh, how long ago? Um, I think about 19 months ago, you know, a year and a half ago or so. Um, yeah, it, was, it's, it happened quite fast. You know, we, we became really uh, successful back home. And I think like a year later, we released this song, All the Pretty Girls. And then pretty much, you know, we had labels and publishing companies and everyone calling us. We didn't know what a publisher was at the time, you know. <laughs> Iceland's a very, very small country. But uh, yeah, so, so we started um, visiting LA, New York, doing, uh, you know, these, uh, these shows for, for all these labels and ended up, you know, uh, choosing a, a great group of people to work with. And, uh, and you were visiting New York and LA, you ended up in Austin. How did you, how did you yeah. end up there? Um, we were looking at, at Austin and Nashville, it just felt like that was a good, good fit for us, you know, um, like, uh, the music scene is great in Austin, it's, uh, a lot of music came from there, some of the, some of the music we're inspired by, and, and uh, was it culture shock moving? Not really, you know, it's a, it's a big country, so, uh, sometimes feels like crossing countries, really, you know, going from state to state, but, um, it was less of a culture shock than I could have. Well, I, I, having been to Iceland and been to Austin, I'll say that they have this much in common. There's, there seem to be a fondness among the local residents for beer and whiskey. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, and the weather, it's, it, it can get hot in Texas. Uh, I, I guess that is different, yeah. Yeah, yeah so in some ways. Um, the album, you worked with uh, uh, Jaquire King, who's worked with the Kings of Leon, Mike Crosley, who's worked with... Uh, Jake Bug, uh, the 1975. Uh, you recorded it all in Nashville, mostly in Nashville. Uh, mostly in Nashville. We had recordings from Iceland, London, and uh, well, we've we've been touring pretty much since we moved to the U.S. So, so the album is really has recordings from multiple cities in the U.S. Um, since we were just jumping into studios at times, you know, it's uh, it's been. A lot of traveling in the last 18 months, to be honest. So I, I guess the album is, in a way, a travelogue of, uh, of uh, moments in your... Yeah, in a way, you know, but, but then we also had, you know, a few weeks to really go into Nashville with Shakira and, and, and really, you know, uh, do some, some core work. Uh, wh what was that like? Uh, th those tracks really leap out of the, the record. They're some of the biggest uh, rock tracks on the, the record. Uh, t tell me about working on those. Um, well, the, the record, my concept was really this A-B thing, which is, uh, I think of it as, as a vinyl, you know, A-C, B-side, A-side, B-side, um, kind of to show the diversity of, uh, yeah, of, of the band, and I, I write these different tunes, you can, you can tell that side A is quite more upbeat than, than the B-side, and I thought it was a good way to, to kind of show the dynamics and the, the di diversity of the band. Well, that, that's interesting uh, that that it's it's related to vinyl because I I know you, you, you we we watched the video shot in the volcano which I want to get to in a second but you've shot a number of live videos in different locations including right. one for No Good a, a song that was featured on the soundtrack to Vinyl that you shot in uh, uh, United uh, United Recordings in uh, Nashville yeah uh, which I, I don't know if people know this is uh, pretty much the center point the focal point for the vinyl revival in the U S one of the the oldest continuing vinyl pressing plants in the U.S. They do a huge amount of business. Right. Yeah, that was was a great experience. Yeah, it was it was it's like a historical place. It was really fun. Um, Looks like you shot upstairs in that 
room they call the Motown the Motown suite. room, yeah. Yeah, which is a, an amazing room. It's like preserved. It's like a time capsule from 1964. It really does, yeah. It's like you're going back in time. It's, it's quite special. Had you, had you been to a, a pressing plant before? I had not, no. Uh, we don't really have those in Iceland. Um, we don't have many of them in the U.S. either. <laughs> no, I guess not. No, it's, it was it was a great experience. It was fun. Right, it's 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 really amazing because yeah. they 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 um they they run that plant all the time, mm -hmm. uh, and the machines are quite old. Yeah, it's, it's like it's not just a vintage format. Those are that's that's vintage machinery. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's let's talk about being in that volcano. Sure. Uh, you you were you were telling me it looks very cold, but you were telling me that's actually in the middle of summer. Yeah, yeah. It it was surprisingly cold down there. <laughs> it was, uh, um, well, well, let's take a step back. Who comes up with the idea? Hey, I know what let's do. Let's go to the dormant volcano that hasn't erupted in a thousand right. years, and we'll go down inside and spend about twenty-two hours making a live video. Yeah. Well, you know, usually you can't go inside volcanoes. I think this there's one or two in the world that you can actually go into the the magma chamber. Um, it hasn't erupted in about a thousand years, so the odds were pretty good. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we knew that it was possible, and, and we heard uh, it's a tourist attraction now, and um, so we contacted some of the people, and we thought, you know, why the not? tourist attraction in Iceland, because you can actually the, yeah, it's you set can up go, to go down and Right, yeah, I think... Um, uh, I think it was National Geographic that installed like a, an elevator uh, there about 10 years ago or so. And uh, they even have electricity down there. So that made us made it easier for us to, to play live, you know. But it was a challenge, I will say. It took us about 26 hours total. We had to have a... You, you can park the cars about 45 minutes out, and then you have to walk through the... You know, the so you, you you had to haul all your equipment from. The well, we cars. had a we had a helicopter oh, there to do go. that. So. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it was it was still quite challenging, and the and the elevator goes quite slowly. And it's about ten minutes to go down and ten minutes to go up, and it can only fit about five people. But it was it was amazing, and the the acoustics down there were incredible, and it's it's beautiful, so uh, very special. Uh. Going back to that, that question I just asked, whose idea was it? What made you want to do it? I think we'd all kind of had our eye on it. You know, we had, um, uh, I don't remember if it was Danny mentioned it or something, but we, it was like, uh, it was an idea that we had in the back of our heads for a while. And uh, fortunately enough, you know, and, and the people working there, they were super supportive. They kind of just worked throughout the whole night. One of them was in the elevator, like halfway up there with, some lighting gear. <laughs> he just stayed there for like six hours, man. We didn't even know he was there anymore. He was, I think he was wearing like five sweaters or something. Yeah. So. Uh, wow. And it's that cold just because of how far, I mean, how far down are you? I guess so. It was uh, 400 feet or so. I wow. can't remember. Yeah. It was, it was far. Um, there's also like fresh water coming through. It takes like six days. So it's dripping all the time. Wow. Okay. Because I, I had read you had a fear of heights, but you don't have a fear of going uh, down. I mean, you, you should go. You should go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you tell me. Next trip, yeah. okay. Um, you've been on tour, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that track, uh, uh, Way Down We Go, has done uh, quite well for you uh, at, at radio. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe you've gone to number one at Alternative Radio at this point. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, What's it been like taking this music inspired by American sounds around America? Um, well, I mean, the reaction has been great. The feedback from people is really something special and something, you know, that I, I really... Uh, it, it's great, you know, to get that feedback. But um, I don't know. It's uh, People often ask me, like, you know, uh, if you've been writing more kind of this and this American music since you moved to the U.S., the honest uh, answer is that I, I wrote most of the stuff before moving to the U.S. Right. So um, I don't know, I've always been inspired by blues, and I think, uh, I think it's, it's, it's just a part of 
who you are, and, and once it gets you, it doesn't really doesn't really go away, you know. Sure. I mean, there, there's the sense that it's a been a worldwide music for yeah many many decades. Yeah, and I think it's a surprise factor to people, you know, being from Iceland and everything, playing playing the blues. But yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter where you're from, you know. Were there were there any places? I mean, you know, Nashville, Austin, um, uh, the United Pressing Plant. Were there any places, any meccas, American music meccas you'd wanted to get to? Sure. I mean, those places you, you mentioned, you know, and, and there's, for example, a track on the album called Automobile, where I sing about, you know, going to California, San Diego, San Francisco, right. those places. Yeah, I mean, I wrote that song in Spain. I'd never been to America before 18 months ago, so it's, it's kind of funny. So it was actually getting to the places you'd been singing about. Or yeah, in, you, in, in your mind, yeah. Uh, how'd, how'd they live up to the idea? They did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> um, what's, uh, what's next? You got some tour dates and a little time off. Yeah. Um, we have a, a big fall tour coming up, the handprint tour. Um, yeah, a few weeks off, which will be, which will be good. It's, it's been pretty crazy. Well, hopefully um, get some riding done and, and relax a little bit. We were, we were home a few weeks ago in, in Iceland as well. Shot another video there, so uh, it was great to, to go back, play the show as well. Those uh, fall tour dates uh, will take you around the U.S., around the world, both? Yeah, well, um, around the U.S., and then we have uh, a couple of days in, in Europe as well. Uh, and you mentioned you've been uh, uh, hoping to get some, some writing done. Is it a challenge when you get into this kind of... Uh, uh, situation where you're working so hard to get the record out and then working so hard to get it the music to people is it a challenge finding the time to write now or sure I mean it's it's a little different you know uh, having a little less free time but you you try to adapt and uh, and uh, yeah yeah sure it's it's a little difficult but yeah uh, okay it uh it works out you know you you, fi you find the time. Uh, well, we've got time for some uh, questions from the audience. Hi, JJ. Thank you for being here. Are those your handprints on the cover of the album? They sure are. Uh, the ink didn't come off for quite a few days. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hey. Um, I was wondering, when you were younger, did you train to sing, or is it just a natural ability that you knew you had, and how do you keep up um, your ability today? I have not had much training. I didn't really start singing until pretty late, like 18. Um, so yeah, it kind of came, came naturally, I guess, yeah. If you could get a tattoo of any one of your lyrics, what would you get? I would rather not, I think. <laughs> no. You mean you don't want to get a tattoo or you don't want to tattoo your well, own lyrics? Well, not my own body. lyrics, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, did you have any uh, like favorite bands growing up, or any uh, specific uh, musicians and artists that you listened to uh, that influenced your music? For sure, yeah. There, it's you know I get this question a lot. It's it's really hard to to narrow it down to uh, a handful of bands, but I mean it goes uh, from Ray Charles to Led Zeppelin to the Beatles. You know a lot of a lot of truly great artists that I've been inspired by my whole life. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, well, okay. One more in the front. What's your favorite song that you've written? Favorite, favorite song that you've written? Uh, yeah, I mean, that can vary, you know, from day to day, really. But um, I don't know. There's some more personal than others. I have to play these songs all the time, so it kind of, you know, some days uh, uh, this one's more favorite than, than another one. I can't really, can't really say. Yeah. Hopefully the next song I'll write will be my favorite. Yeah. There we go. Well, on that note, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so JJ. much. Appreciate it.